What's going on, everyone? Adam McGinnis here, hit songwriter and producer. And today I'm going to be answering some questions that people have sent me in the DMs looking for more advice about the music industry. Now, one thing people tend to ask and seem to be a little unsure about is how do you split up the publishing and the master rights? This is a very big topic because that's where all your money's going to be made as an artist, as a writer, as a producer. It's made in the royalties and sometimes the upfront advances. But if you don't know how these things are split up or how they should be most likely looked at, what tends to happen, and I see a lot of, and it's important that you all know this, people tend to not know the business side. So they either ask for too much for the splits, which makes other people not want to work with them because they're asking for amounts that are way out of being normal, or they don't receive the right amounts for themselves, so they actually undercut themselves. So today I'm going to get into what are the correct ways to go about your splits so that way you really understand how to move forward in your career and making sure you're not making a mistake that ends up being something really, really bad in the future if you get a big hit song, but you only ask for 2% of it. So today we're going to break that down and I'm going to show you how to look at your splits. Okay, first and foremost, let's just pretend that we're working with three people in a session. Uh, we got to first understand what everyone's roles are in that session. There's going to be a producer, there's going to be a songwriter, there's going to be an artist. So that's normally how it works. Producer, songwriter, artist. Now, if you're doing something where you're recording at a producer's studio and you're not paying for studio time. So the first instance of me showing you this is meaning no payment. You're not paying the producer, you're not paying the songwriters. This is a normal collaboration. So in this instance, the producer will most likely own the percentage of the master, the higher percentage share. The reason for that is because you're recording it at their studio with their equipment, and they've invested time and money to purchase that equipment. So usually the master goes to who pays for the recording. Some people have investors that will pay for the recording, and therefore the investor will own a portion of the master. Some people have record labels. Some people have uh, friends. And then sometimes the producer who owns the studio or who's renting the space is the one who we paid back for that allocation of the masters, which is important because if you're not recording at your house, that means someone else has to pay for the equipment, the lighting, electricity, rental of the space, so they should be paid back um, fairly. So if there's three people, let me show you how it normally breaks down. The producer, like I said, normally has the higher level of the mastership ownership, so at least 50% should go to the producer. The songwriter can also ask for another percentage, especially if the songwriter already has credits and they already has a team. This is important. If a songwriter has a team and they have managers, publishing people, admin companies that will help to pitch the song, that means that songwriter is valuable not just on the publishing side but possibly on the master. It doesn't mean they have to, but it's possible that they can ask for it and you can have that discussion. Now the other percentage would be for the artist. So what I would say, which makes it pretty fair, is the producer gets 50%, the artist gets 25%, and the songwriter gets 25%. If you were all three are creating the song, everyone should have equal percentage when it comes to publishing. So 33 and a third percent to the writer, 33 and a third percent to the producer, 33 and a third percent to the artist. But that's only if you all are in the same room together. We're in a world right now where a lot of people are working on Zoom, where people are working on productions across the world with different people around the world, and they don't know how to allocate splits when they're working on Zoom. So the best way to look at it is this. The artist gets 40%. The producer gets 40% and the songwriter gets 20% of the master split. The publishing is still equal 33, 33, and 33. Now, why is that broken down the way it is? Well, one, the producer still have to put in all the time of producing the track, mixing the track, all the instrumentation, still using all their equipment. The artist, most likely in a Zoom session, is going to be recording their vocals either at their home, so they're using their equipment, or they're going to have to go to another studio and rent that out, so they're using their time, energy, money, and the other equipment. And the songwriter usually isn't doing any of those things. So that's why they have a lower percentage when it's in that case like that. So 40% to the producer, 40% to the artist, 20% to the additional songwriter. So now that you understand that, the question gets, well, how does it work if you pay someone? Now, this is different. If you pay, if you're the artist and you're paying a producer, you should be owning the mastership outright. So let's say you come to my studio, you pay me my full rate, we're gonna have a contract that says you now own 100% of the master. Now the only way 
that you'll see people start to negotiate the difference in the percentages is if you can't afford my full rate. So let's say my full rate is $20,000 per track and you can't afford that. Well, then I might say, I really like working with you, and I think we can place this song on TV shows and movies. So in order for me to make my money back on the time that you can't pay for, what if you can pay $10,000 per song, and we can split the master? So it means I own 50% of it, and you own 50% of it. That way, at least I can make back that money that you can't afford for my normal rate. So that's another way to look at these things. This is very, very important, and here's the reason why is because sometimes people don't know how to negotiate the right rates. And so what they do is they ask for too much. I've seen artists walk in the room and be like, well, I'm the artist, so I deserve 100% of the master. And the producer is looking at them going, no, it's, it's my studio, it's my work, I'm a part of this collaboration as well. Why would I give it all to you? And the artist is like, it's my voice. you got to understand something. This music industry is all about collaboration. If you're not good at collaborating with people, especially if you can't pay them off, people are not going to want to work with you. Now, some people might get to a certain level of their career, they can afford to pay all their producers, they can afford to pay all their writers, so they own the majority of those songs, which is something completely different. But for up-and-coming writers and up-and-coming producers and up-and-coming artists, it's best to understand how all this stuff breaks down, so that way you can easily work with other people, easily collaborate. And the reason why this is very important is because you're going to have to sign split sheets, and you want to do that right when you're getting the song finished. Okay, so right after the session is done, the track is being finalized, we should have those split sheets signed, but there should be a conversation prior. This is very important. So if you walk into a session and you've never talked about splits, you don't know if that person in the corner who's a writer or that person's producer has a different thought in their mind versus what they feel like they deserve. You don't know how long they've been in the business if you don't know all the credits. So this is a conversation that should be had prior. So before you even walk into a session, you should say, hey, so who's writing on this track today? And they'll say, you know, me, you, and another person. Okay, great. Just want to open up the conversation, have equal splits on publishing, and the master should be in the favor of the producer and splitting double with the artist and the writer. Are you guys all open to that? This way, everyone comes to the table with understanding what can most likely be the, uh, the breakdown, and there's no hidden tricks that happen. Because I've seen it where an artist goes and records a full song, The producer is still mixing it. The artist leaves. They sign no split sheets. They get it all done. And then the artist is like, hey, I want to hear that track. And the producer is like, cool, but you got to sign this contract first that just says that I own the master. And now the artist has no leverage to to negotiate. So it puts the artist in a very hard position because they don't sign the paperwork. They can't get their song. They do sign the paperwork. They might be giving away a lot of rights, which are potentially a lot of money. So what I feel like it's best is always have the conversation first about equal publishing always, unless if the other person has massive hits. So if you're working with some massive songwriter or a massive producer who has number one hits, they might have a clause in their contract that says no matter what, they get 50% of publishing and the other writers have to split it. Depending on how bad that you want to get a hit with them will be determining if you're going to agree to that or not. But for most upcoming people, it's kind of average to have split even. So if there's five people in the room, 20% across the board. If there's four people in the room, 25% across the board. Now, to sum it all up, here's my best advice. Talk about it openly before you have the session. Make sure you sign split sheets at the end when the song is finished. And make sure everyone is on one accord with this. Because what I've seen in this business is that nobody really cares until money is on the table. And that's the worst time to start negotiating. Because what happens is now everyone's invested emotionally in what they are expecting when they get a big check coming. So let's imagine that you get your song on a big movie, right? And they tell you they're going to pay you $100,000. But before, no one had time to sign split sheets because they were too busy, they were working on other projects, they were running late for their yoga class, something was happening, they didn't finish their split sheets. But now, a year later, $100,000 check is on the table for a big movie. I guarantee, all of a sudden, people are going to have friends in their ears, managers in their ears, telling them they deserve more than what they actually should be asking for. I've seen it so many times, it's the reason why I'm coming here and talking to you all about it where the artist will say, but it's my voice, so I deserve more. Or the writer will say, well, I created that hook, and I created that concept, so it's worth more. And the producer will say, well, I created all the music, so it's worth more. So everyone has their idea once money's on the table, especially when you don't know where that person is in their life. So that producer could have just put down a down payment on a house, and they need that money. Or that writer could need a new car. Everyone's going through things in life, And they will always find a way to where their reasoning is worth more validation than yours. So that's why you have the conversation first, 
You sign the split sheet second, and then you make sure it's all saved and filed away. So that way, when there's a check on the table, you're not taking advantage of, and you're also not taking advantage of other people without knowing the actual business. I hope this helps some of you out there. If you do have any questions, just leave it in the comment section below, and I'll try to answer as best as I can. That being said, be good to yourself, be good to others, and I'll see you soon. Give me some of that.